Hello, so firstly a very warm Tashitle. Hello in Tibet to all the audience gathered here. <laughs> so as mentioned by Arna earlier, I, I was a shy fellow and I'm a current wife fellow, for which I have come to talk about my Tibetan experience. So by Tibetan experience, people have often asked me, have you been to Tibet? But sadly no, because according to the Freedom of Press Agency, Tibet is the second least expert place after North Korea. However, by Tibetan experience, I mean those stories, interactions that I had with members of a nation without the homeland, as well as my minimal role in the Tibetan, Tibetan movement, which has allowed me to taste or get an experience of Tibet while being, while being miles away from it. So at the very outset, let me introduce you to my friend Norbu Blagya. So Norbu has spent around 19 years of his life in India, yet he is not an Indian citizen because Norbu was born in the calm region of Tibet. However, at the tender age of 12, his parents forced him to escape to India. Why so? What, any, what made Norbu escape his homeland or what induced his parents to send away their son at such a tender age? So, when I, when I posed the same question to Norbu, he said that he was born in a land where he has given education in an alien tongue that is Mandarin and where speaking Tibetan, your native tongue, can land you up in five years in jail or, or, or lifetime imprisonment. And where his native tongue Tibetan is taught as a foreign language in Tibet. He comes from, from a land which is heavily militarized, in which, which is indicated by the presence of more number of Chinese troops than local Tibetans. And this is also a place where one can be arrested arbitrarily without any due reason or without following, following due process of law, given that for such silly, uh, for such uh, minimal acts such as wearing your national dress, speaking Tibetan, or keeping a photo of His Holiness the 40 Dalai Lama in your home. In addition, Nobu comes from a place where religion is, is, is seen as a crime. Even the chanting of a, of a Buddhist mantra can do trouble, and with, and, and, and with increasing clampdown on peaceful monks for, for, for just trying to follow religion and the tearing down of monasteries. Nobu was prevented from learning the ways of the Buddha. In addition, these handcuffs are just a trailer to a lifetime picture of heinous torture and gross violation of human rights. So in these conditions, my friend escaped from Tibet via Nepal into India. However, the journey was not so easy because Tibetans are denied from having passports and they are and they are and they're and they're not granted visas easily for foreign travel. In such a case, they have to rely on private agents who convey them who convey them across the border. However, this journey is filled with deep deep forests, towering mountains, and fast flowing streams, along with the danger of being shot down by the Chinese border police. So, my friend set up on this journey along his co-travelers, which included two adults and, a, and my, my, my friend Norbu, who was on, was on the age of 12, 12 years and a, and a younger infant of around six years old. So Norbu often, often tells me about how, he, uh, about how he felt cold when he, when he was taking shelter in these, in these deep, deep jungles, in, in Tibetan borderlands. But the most stark, stark incident ha happened when my friend and his, and his co-travelers -tra were crossing a fast flowing stream on a raft and, such, and, and the raft overturned. While my friend and, and the two adults swam back to safety in front of their eyes that six year old kid was carried away by, by, by the current to ultimate death. And even that, his his co-travelers had, had no chance to mourn for the kid because in such a journey, delay meant death. Either shot up by the Chinese forces or if caught to a lifetime of imprisonment and, and, and unending torture for you and, and, your, and your members as well. 
or the family. So crossing all odds, my friend reached Kathmandu and from there he went to the TCB or Tibetan Children's, Children's Village where he grew up. Now let me tell, tell the story of this lovely couple Yonten and Pema. So Yonten and Pema were a, happy, were, a ha -ha, were a happily married couple when China attacked Tibet in, in 1915. Given the aim of the, of, of the Chinese state to promote communism and force research on land, Pema and Yonten, who hailed from the traditional land-owning family, were first of all taken off their rights, their lands were claimed by the state, and they, and they were kicked out. In addition, they were subjected to Thamesing trials, trials in which members of the traditional land-ruling family were deemed as oppressors and were, and were, tied, in, and were tied down in public while, while they were built with sticks and stones on them. In addition, Pema and Yonten were later sentenced to work in, a, in the Chinese labor camps where they were subjected to 12 hours of inhuman work conditions. And as with the previous story, Pema and Yonten got hold of an agent through, through which they, they traveled to Dharmashala and set up a local known as Tibet Yak House, which they managed to, till to, today. So now coming to my part of the story of Tibetan experience. So, my Tibetan experience began with the river Brahmaputra. Now you all must be wondering, what's the link between Tibet, a landlocked country high in the um, mountains and a river flowing in India? So, along with North and South Pole, Tibet is known as the Third Pole because most of the major Asian rivers like Ganga, Brahmaputra, Indus, Meccan, all origin from Tibet. So, as you see in the map, the, the river Brahmaputra originates from Man Sarovar in Tibet. By, and, and in Tibet, it is, it is known by the name of Yarlung Zangbo. And on entering the northeastern border of India, it takes the name of, 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 of Brahmaputra. And on entering Bangladesh, it takes the name of Padma. And, finally meets the Bay of Bengal. In addition to being the lifeline of Assam, Brahmaputra is also crucial to the Assamese identity and culture with numerous songs and poems written on it. In addition, Majuli, the largest green island in the world, which is the seat of the Vaishnavite culture, is, is located in Brahmaputra. However, in recent years, the Chinese government has constructed the, these four, four dams, Dagu, Jiekshu, Zangu, and Jiasha, by which they intend to divert the Yalu Zangfu from, from, from its natural course and through the and through the Taklamakan Desert to Xinjiang or East Turkestan, another occupied region, in order to boost their own commercial plantations. These dams have been the recent bone of contention between India and China. And and its effects were, were, felt, uh, were felt early on when, when last year, around mid-September, the surface of the, of the Brahmaputra was filled with huge amounts of mud and debris, which on later investigation were, were found to be to have come from the Zangmo Dam. However, strangely, being an Assamese born, born, born in Brooklyn, Guwahati, I was not aware of such of, of these facts and of the implications of of the Chinese approach to Tibet over Assam. I, I was told about these facts by my friend, Loksang Saten, who is a member of the SFT and who had come to Guwahati to organize a campaign against the Zang Modern. In addition, Loksang Saten told me the story of Tibet. Tibet, a once independent, peaceful kingdom country with, 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 with its own unique culture and language, was taken over by China only because of the winds and the wild dreams of this single person known as Chairman Mao Zedong, who, after the communist takeover in 49, claimed that Tibet and China are one nation and it's time to unite the motherland, and if necessary, by force. He also spoke of the Battle of Chamdo, which happened in 1950, where 80,000 Tibetan soldiers, armed with just bows and arrows and old musket guns, were faced against a two million strong machine gun equipped 
troops of the People's Liberation Army, and also of the 17-point uh, agreement, which members of the which members of the Tibetan government were made to sign by force, and and although this agreement guarantee them autonomy and the right to practice their own culture religion, yet these are only need. And the, and the consequence of this forceful takeover is seen to this day, where scholars have described Tibet as a, as a textbook example of a, of a police state, in which your every minute action and every word you utter is heavily monitored. My friend also, also says that the slightest sign of dissent in the case of in the form of a WhatsApp message or even giving a dislike on a Facebook post by the, by, by the government can lead you to jail and torture. And Tibet has its own dark history of self immolations with around 153 immolations so far. And according to sources, this is the, this is the youngest age of, of, of the self immolators, around mere 16 years old. And, and here's a, uh, this is a picture from the Tibetan Museum in Dharamshala, which is a which is home from tribute to the numerous countless souls who have who lit themselves in flames while sh shouting, "Long live His Holiness, Free Tibet! I wish you all free Tibet." And Tibet is also infamous for this kid known as Gedun Choiki Nima, or the 11th Panchen Lama who is the world's youngest political prisoner and was last seen in May 1995 and till now he has only found. So, as a person hailing from a, re from a similar region which, is, which has been for the last 60 years under the spell of the Draconian AFSPA, Armed Forces Special Powers Act, I found a sort of similarity between the, the, the stories of the Tibetan and, and such stories which come from my region. For instance, the state of Manipur, which has the dubious distinction of, of being a state with the highest number of fake encounters in India by the army and the police.